Hi there, I'm Luigi Domenico from UFMG. In the previous videos, we talked a bit about LLVM passes, what they are, how to use, and how to write them. So to close the introduction series, now we're gonna see an example of a ready-to-use LLVM analysis. We already know that the LLVM middle end is formed by passes, and these passes can be either analysis or transformations. And even though this structure, of an analysis and transformation is quite similar. There are some differences. For instance, on transformations can modify the code. The results are also different. While the analysis returns the collected information, the transformation must return a set of analysis that were not affected by the code changes. LLVM has a ready to use analysis pass called loop analysis. This loop analysis returns a structure called loop info which stores all the loops of a function. And once we have access to the loops, uh, we can get a lot, lot of use of information, such as the loop header, the loop ledge, which is a block with a back edge to, loop, to the loop header, exiting blocks, which are the blocks with edges to outside the loop, exit blocks, which are the targets of the exiting blocks, and much more. I'm gonna show you a piece of code from a project that I've been working on, which uses some information related to loops. But first, let me give you a brief context about this project. LEAF is an acronym for low-level isochronous form. The meaning of isochronous here is related to the running time of a program. We say that a program is isochronous if it always executes the same operations, regardless of the inputs it takes, and if it always performs the same memory access in the same order which gives us a running time that does not depend on the input. This constant property is especially important for cryptography implementations, which must be free of side channels. Side channels are vulnerabilities that can be explored by an adversary to obtain sensitive information. If you want to know more about this project, uh, check out on, the, on my, my webpage. I'm also leaving the links uh, in the description. Uh, you can read our paper, Memory Safe Elimination of Side Channels, which was published at CGO 2021. At the time we published this paper, our prototype could not handle loops at all. Instead, we required every loop to be unrolled. But since then, we have been working on an extension of this prototype to deal with loops with constant bounds. And this is what the piece of code I'm going to show you today is about. The goal of the function that I'm about to show you is to sort of preprocess loops so we can handle them later on. Suppose we have a loop with a header and a body performing some computations. Inside the body, there is a conditional statement which exits the loop in case it's true or else move to the second part, second part of the body. Then there is a loop condition at the end of the loop with a back edge and an edge to the exit block. And we want to eliminate this conditional statement inside the loop. Uh, because we need to guarantee that the loop will perform the, uh, will always perform the same number of iterations. But for that, we need to add a few function in the loop header to keep track of whether the condition statement was triggered or not. This is what the function that I'm about to show is mainly about. In addition, it will also collect a few informations to be used later on. Few functions are present in the SSA form and they are used to join variables. In this case, the result of the fifth function would be false the first time the program reaches the loop header, and then it would be the value of cons whenever the loop header is reached from the loop ledge. The function is called prepare. It takes a loop info and a context and returns a loop wrapper. This loop wrapper is a custom structure that will store the loop info as well as some additional data. And as I said, loop info is a result of the loop analysis. Hence, somewhere in the code base, we must have something like this, where we require the result of the loop analysis. So first, let's initialize the loop wrapper. Then we define some constants that will be used to insert those few functions. These are the type of the few function and the, and the initial value. Now we're going to reverse all the loops, and for that, we're going to use a loop info. Then we get a loop header and the loop latch. We assume that the latch is unique and thus the loop, hap, the loop has a single back edge. This is mainly for simplicity. There is an LLVM pass that guarantees that 
it is called loop simplify. We also assume that the loop is in rotated form, which can be achieved by running the loop rotate pass. A rotated loop is basically a loop in the do while style with the condition at the end. We store the loop latch for further uses. Next, we get the exiting blocks and the position in the loop header where we're going to insert those three functions. And then we visit each exiting block except for the loop latch, uh, since once this condition statement comes true, the loop ends. We get the exiting block terminator, which is a condition statement. Then we get a conditional value and we create the fill function. And then we traverse the predecessors of the loop header to fill the fill function with the correct incoming values. We also save the fill function in our loop wrapper structure. Then we get the exit blocks, which are the blocks outside the loop, and save them as well. And finally, we return the loop wrapper. So this is how our code looks like. Uh, as you see, the entire prepared function is not very big. It spans 29 lines of code. Anyways, you can get, uh, can get it in the, the repository. I'm gonna leave the, the link in the description of the video. So to illustrate, consider the following function. Uh, it takes an array A and an integer K and traverses the array A trying to search for this integer K. Uh, it, this function translates to the following LLVM intermediate representation. The entry block with a jump to the loop header. The loop header, which gets the current value of the loop induction variable. And the loop body, which loads the value from array A at position I and checks if it is equal to K. If the comparison value is too true, the programs flow to the loop exit and returns 1. Otherwise, the program moves to, to the loop latch where the induction variable is updated and the loop condition is evaluated. We have two condition statements in this loop, one in the loop body and the other in the loop latch, but there's no need to consider this one because once it becomes true, the loop ends. Hence, we shall add just one fee function at the loop header, which is related to the condition statement in the loop body. It is initialized as false because once it becomes, becomes true, it means that the loop ended earlier. So to summarize, we used the loop analysis to get a loop info, which gives us access to, the, to every loop inside a function, including nested ones. And once we have access to every single loop, we could get all sort of information like the loop header and latch, the exit and exiting blocks, and other stuff like if it is out, is in rotated form and, and more. So the goal of this last video was to show you that LLVM is already shipped with a lot of useful stuff that are ready to be used. Uh, this video closes the introduction series and the links to the GitHub repository and the paper are in the description of the video. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment here.